All right. Let's start. Um, yeah. Now, part of this, this bit of in ways is generally asking you to comment on things like how precise it is, and the next day we'll be talking, tomorrow we'll be talking about com comparison. So, what you need to do after the lesson today is to be able to link the variability of random samples, the variability of confidence intervals, and discuss the most, but not all confidence interval will contain the true population proportion. All right? It is sort of like the single answer to everything is yes. Uh, it's that's no conclusion. We cannot say that it is definitely the uh, sample mm. population. Uh, the population is within the sample population. Yeah. We can't say that. All right. Understand the issues in interpreting the significance of confidence interval. <coughs> Define the precision of a confidence interval and examine the effect of changing parameters on the precision. In particular, changing p hat and solving problems informing containment and discuss a uh, fallacy of likelihood of containment. Basically, what I've taught you is all this. You need to know the confidence level, you need to know what standard error is, which is the, uh, the standard deviation based on p hat, the sample, uh, sample, the, sorry, what was I saying? Based on p hat, and think about what the margin of error is, all right? So you need to be able to write out the confidence interval. Now, I have given you the three numbers, the Z score for confidence level of 90%, 95% and 99. Later, I'm gonna show you how to work out 98% confidence interval. 98. Right, now, so just recall the proposition. Most but not all confidence interval will contain the true value of P. Alright? Important thing is most but not all. So as a result, we need to appreciate that a single confidence interval will an interval estimate for the true value of P does not tell us uh, about the actual value. I don't know what that word is. Shouldn't be there. Tell us about the uh, actual value of P. Alright? So we also observe the proposition that once a sample is observed and a confidence interval is constructed, it either does or does not contain the true, problem, true population proportion. All right. So if you think about a series of sample proportion, so the P could be within that sample proportion, it may not be. Remember the graph, I'll show you the graph again. This graph. So remember, in this situation, the P um, the sample proportion, this is the truth, the population proportion, all right? This bit here, one of the sample, it is not, the sample proportion is not in there, whereas the rest are all within the sample proportion, all right? So the idea of containment of the true value of P is quite a challenging one, because in reality, we can never know for certain whether confidence interval does contain P due to the nature of our random sampling. So these are all random sampling. Yep, P is containing here, 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 here. But in this case, none. So true population P is unknown, but it's always constant. Sample proportion, P had always changed. P doesn't change. So we're using a P, we're using P hat to estimate P, that's all. All right, let's have a look at example one. A local government is concerned with the number of high school students who regularly miss uh, breakfast on school days. Two random samples of 330 students are taken and a 95% confidence interval for the true population is constructed for each. These confidence intervals are 0 0.456 and 0 0.45, uh, to 0 0.452 and 0 0.478 to 0 0.502. Now, can you say which of the two confidence intervals are more likely to contain the true value of P? Can you? No, it is not possible. All right, in this situation, you cannot. How do you know? How do you know whether that is this or this or that? You don't know. 
So basically in ways when you're answering question like this, you need to say that neither one is uh, more likely than the other to contain P. Uh, as once observed, the probability that a confidence interval containing P is either 0 or 1. Hence, it cannot be determined. So, I mean, I would suggest that you think about how to write it in uh, ways in that sort of a answering, type of answering the question. So, neither one is more likely than the other to contain P. The probability of a confidence interval contained P is either 0 or 1. Hence, it cannot be determined. That'll do. All right? It's sort of like a standard question, and that's... Yeah. So if a further 90 uh, sufficiently sample of students were to be observed and 95% confidence interval were to be constructed for each sample, how many of the intervals can be expected to contain the true value of P? 90 times 0 0.5. Yep. So in this case, you have 85.5. It really doesn't matter. I pick 86, up, but if you say 85, that's not wrong with, as well. Either way is accepted. All right? I pick 86, it's just because 85.5, I round it up, that's all. This situation doesn't matter. Now, we also discussed the uh, two changes in condition that affect the width of a confidence interval. All right. As confidence interval increases, so does the width, right? And as the sample size increases, the width decreases. So you know that, go back to, uh, go back to the first slide. Uh, which one is that? Yep. Yeah. Okay, think about this. So if n increases, it's go bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So therefore, this value will be smaller. Correct? Yeah. No. But if this is actually getting bigger, if the uh, confidence level is bigger, it's going to be wider. Correct? Yeah. Yeah? So those are the two things I mentioned. Think about the value of n and think about what z is. All right. So... We also have proved, a couple of lessons ago, proof using calculus that the width of a confidence interval is maximized for p equals to, p hat equals to 0 0.5. Right? So those are the two relationships that are established. Now we can think of a third relationship. So when the p hat value tends towards 0 0.5, the standard error increased, and so the margin of error increases. Hence, increasing the uh, width of the confidence, then hence increasing the width of the confidence, confidence interval. So if you think about it, if we've got now Z and N is actually fixed. All right? Z, Z and N is ex actually fixed. So we've got P hat into 1 minus P hat and N. Z and N is fixed. So you can see that with 0 0.5, remember when I show you 0 0.5 times 1 minus 0, uh, 1 minus P hat 0 0.5, we got the maximum, yeah. which is equals to 0 0.25. Yeah. However, as P hat moves away from 0 0.5, let's say 0 0.6, all right? 1 minus P hat is 0 0.4, that is 0 0.24, yes? So yeah. you can see that when the P hat moves away from 0 0.5, the standard error decreases. So the margin of error decreases, hence decreasing the width of the confidence interval. Again, if I move to 0 0.7, 0 0.3, and then 0 0.21, and so on and so forth. You can see that as we moved away from 0 0.5. Okay, if these are fixed, so this is more than this is standard error. This is yeah. That will be smaller. The value yeah. will be smaller, correct? Yeah? Proof to you is getting smaller and smaller, so therefore, and the width of confidence standard error decreases and the margin of error Three decreases. Times that. All right. Because you start at p. So that's important for you to realize you the true relationship. On one time, you take margin of error on the other side. Now, so the width would be two times that. The true relationship we thought so of, we think about z. Take one. If z so increases, two times everything increases. If n increases, 
you get smaller. Okay. All right? And then P. Yeah. If you move towards, move away from 0.5, the standard Just error will decrease. Huh? So the margin of error decreases. Now, let's think about precision now. The precision of a confidence interval is a qualitative measure of how close the estimate is to the true value of the parameter. So it's think of, thinking about qualitative. So to obtain a better interval estimate for P, the width of the confidence interval should be decreased. Whilst um, preserving the confidence interval for best comp comparison. To do so, standard error needs to be decreased and hence the sample size needs to increase. As a result, the precision of the confidence interval increases. However, as mentioned above, when the confidence level increases, so does the width. And so the precision of the confidence interval decreases. All right, let's have a look at example. So I've got two 90% confidence interval for population proportion P. All right, one is 0 0.52 plus or minus 0 0.035, 0 0.49 plus or minus 0 0.38. All right, the sample size is 250. You need to compare the precision of the two confidence intervals. So which one is more precise? Basically, what you need to do is to work out the width. The width is that times two, correct? Go back to my first slide. Uh, go back to this one. So the width is the margin of error times two. Yeah? So you're thinking about the width. I mean, you can compare the margin of error as well. But comparing the width, uh, which one is that? Which example is that? Is this one. All right. Comparing the width. This one is 0 0.070. This is 0 0.076. So if the width is smaller, it's more precise. That's basically it. All right, the first sample with a small width of 0 0.07 has higher precision. Basically, that's what you need to know about precision. All right, example three. Mm. Last example. In order to estimate the true population of WA residents that were born small overseas, samples yeah. were taken yeah. and sample proportions were calculated. Yeah. Now, just a quick question, how many of you are born overseas? One, two, three, four, five, six, I mean, including me, seven. So, are we a good sample proportion for WA? Probably not. You need a lot more. So in this case, we've got a, a random sample of 200 residents. You know, uh, A constructed the confidence level of 0 0.2887 to 0 0.4213. Can you calculate the value of p hat? Yeah. Pretty straightforward, this question. It's just Mid right in the middle. Yeah. Yeah? Now, the next thing is a sample, uh, a second sample of 500 residents were taken and the p hat was found to be 170 over 500. This time, First, I want you to construct a 95% confidence interval using the second sample, and then construct a 98% confidence interval using the second sample. Now, I've never shown you, I've never given you the figures for 98%. How do you do it? Can you remember? Just do the inverse. Zero. You need to use, you need to find uh, the z value, yeah. all right? So, Using get your class fed out. If you haven't got a class fed, get a class fed out. Class fed. You need to find the z value. So, you know that distribution. what happened is six, four, two. you're looking at so no. <laughs> the area here. Uh, maybe, I think it's front one. The area here is 98%. All right, you need to know the Z value. Yeah? So, you go to statistics, okay, never mind. calculate, I was way off. interval. Two point three three three. Remember three. your interval, it should be uh, the third one down. It's 
2.326. Yep. So the confidence level is 0.98. Uh, I didn't do any stats. X was whatever it is, 170, and there was 500. No, but to get the confidence level. Hang on. Just like that, boom. Ah, uh, I've got the wrong one. That was the interval. I was, I'm supposed to look at the um, Z value. My fault. Oh. My fault, my fault, my fault. Uh, it should be okay. inverse normal CD. Yeah. Center, Center. Yeah. the probability is uh, 0.98. My fault. It should be inverse CD. Right. Okay. And next. Yeah. So therefore, you've got two values. Minus 2.326 and 2.326. So for 98%, the Z value is 2.326. All right, my fault. I used the wrong thing. It's not the interval that we're looking at. We are looking at inverse CD. All right, so 2.326. In the exam, if you're not sure, you're going back to work on uh, inverse normal CD. All right, it's the center and the probability is 0.98, which What's is the area CD? under the graph. Um, I've got a bigger. Oh, no, right. nuggets, nuggets. So, oh, nuggets, no, yeah. now let's start off with constructing the 95%. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, constructing the 95% confidence yeah. interval Take using the second one. sample. The nuggets, what I would do is, I will first nuggets. work out the standard yeah. error. Yeah. Work out the standard yeah. error yeah. to four decimal four. places. Of course, your calculator is. Right, you can use the, more than four decimal places because your calculator can do that. Distribution. Oh, yeah. If not, write down, yeah. write down, write that down. Standard error. Write it down, and then work out the uh, work out. Write down the distribution for p hat. Always do that. Always write down the distribution for p hat, and then you can work out the ninety-five percent confidence interval. And of course, evaluate it. All right. Can we you can use a bracket or use this uh, notation. It really doesn't matter. Can we evaluate straight away, or do we have to write it down and then evaluate? It depends on the question. All right. I've had a chat with Mr. Alphonse before. If it is a two mark question, it will the examiner will want to look at the Z value. All right. All right. They want to understand. They want to know that you know the Z value. So it is always. Safer, just one extra, 30, 30 seconds extra, write down so that they know you know to use the Z value. Right. And again, now, just if you use the wrong Z value, you evaluate that, but when you compare, they, that will be follow through mark. All right. All right, just make sure you do that. If you don't have the Z value, it's really hard. So I will show you how to work out the Z for 98%, 2.326. So again, you can evaluate that. Uh oh, so you did 1.96 for the right one. Oh, sorry. It should be two point. Uh, so it's still. It's, 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 it's correct. Still right it's, I've, I've written down it incorrectly, but I think I did it correctly using a uh, class map. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I used it correctly using the class map. Sorry. I'll change that later. So, therefore, one of the width is 0 0.8. 083, the other width is 0 0.096. So which one is more precise? 95% has better, has higher precision um, because of the uh, upper bound technology. The width is smaller. Mm. Okay. So basically, you need to be able to use all this and then do a comparison. That's yep. all. Yep. Easy. It's pretty straightforward, this one. As long as you know how to use all the uh, equation I've given you. That's all I have for you today. There are some questions from Nelson that you need to do. And one last lesson tomorrow.